what's this? Chopstick Pad B has taken a major step forward with its first successful test, demonstrating immense potential. Incredible. Meanwhile, new systems are being integrated to bring the pad into full operation soon. Firefly has secured a significant contract with the USSF in tandem, marking another big win for the company. And finally, on the other side of the world, China is making bold moves in its lunar ambitions, officially naming key systems for its upcoming missions. All this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. While Pad A has been the center of attention with its rigorous testing, Pad B has been quietly making significant progress as its infrastructure steadily takes shape. Since its installation on the launch tower on the 27th of January, the chopstick system on Pad B has undergone multiple reinforcement stages, with small yet crucial systems continuously being added. Among the key milestones, the actuator system was installed on the 12th of February, followed by the ramp systems on the 17th. On the same day, the cladding system was moved to Pad B, likely signaling its imminent installation. However, beyond these ongoing upgrades, the real highlight came with the first functional test of Chopstick Pad B. On that same day, the tethers securing the chopsticks were removed in preparation for the test, marking a significant step forward. That evening, the left arm of the chopstick system made its first movement. While the opening speed appeared slow, indicating a controlled demonstration rather than a full power test, the movement itself was remarkably smooth. This suggests that the joint systems are functioning as expected, providing the necessary flexibility for future operations. From a personal perspective, this new chopstick system seems to possess greater agility than the one on Pad A. In a previous interview with Everyday Astronaut, Musk revealed that the new arms are designed to be shorter, reducing bulkiness and increasing efficiency. This redesign is already proving beneficial, with the new system appearing more streamlined and potentially more effective in catching and handling returning starships. Of course, this initial test is just the beginning. In the near future, we can expect further trials, including movement tests for the remaining arm, as well as more comprehensive lifting, lowering, closing, opening, and rotating tests. A crucial next step will be the weight pressure test, likely involving the use of large orange water bags to simulate the forces the system will endure during actual Starship catches. Additionally, SpaceX may use Test Tank 16 to replicate real-world conditions and assess the system's reliability. As work progresses, other components, such as the landing pins, will be installed and it's possible the arm will be extended slightly to ensure an optimal reach. Meanwhile, construction efforts continue below the launch tower. Key infrastructure components, including the flame trench and orbital launch mount, are expected to be installed soon. Both of these systems remain under development at the Sanchez site, reinforcing the rapid pace of construction at Starbase. Another critical addition on the horizon is the Pad B tank farm. Unlike Pad A, which has a dedicated tank farm nearby, Pad B currently lacks an independent fuel storage facility. Given the increasing fuel demands of future Starship variants, including the upcoming V2 and V3 iterations, a separate tank farm for Pad B is not just a convenience, it's a necessity. Progress on this front is already visible. On the 16th of February, cameras captured six fuel tanks being moved in from NASA's Kennedy Space Center offices, and by the 17th, the total had increased to seven. Five of these tanks were loaded onto a barge with transport to Starbase expected next month. Notably, these are horizontal tanks, indicating that they are likely intended for storing liquid methane and liquid oxygen, both essential for Starship operations. The expansion of the tank farm further reinforces the idea that Pad B will be operational in the near future. With these ongoing developments, especially the advancements in the chopstick system, anticipation is growing for Pad B's eventual role in Starship recovery. It seems increasingly likely that Pad B will be utilized to catch a returning ship in one of the upcoming test flights. While Flight 9 remains uncertain, Flight 10, featuring major upgrades to Ship 36, is shaping up to be the first prototype to attempt a full chopstick catch. 
Looking at the broader timeline, Flight 8 is expected to launch in early to mid-March. If successful, Flights 9 and 10 could follow in April and May, aligning perfectly with Pad B's construction and testing schedule. However, for this vision to become reality, SpaceX must remain laser-focused on refining its landing procedures. Maintaining consistent super-heavy landings and achieving controlled Starship touchdowns are crucial steps that Flights 8 and 9 must demonstrate before the full reusability era can begin. Regardless of the exact timing, the moment when a ship is caught by the chopsticks, ushering in the era of rapid Starship turnaround, draws ever closer. And wouldn't it be exciting if Pad B's first real performance was a successful ship catch? If you're as excited as I am, say wow in the comment section down below. Then like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey toward full reusability. SpaceX has several key updates for the upcoming flight. The simulated satellites for Flight 8 have now been revealed and are currently located in Star Factory. Visually, they appear similar to the payloads used in Flight 7. Soon, these simulated payloads will likely be transported to Megabay 2 for integration with Ship 34. After completing a rigorous static fire test, S-34 is now undergoing inspections in Megabay 2, a critical phase given the unprecedented intensity and duration of its recent test. In the near future, it'll be equipped with the flight termination system, PES dispenser, and the simulated payload before being rolled out to the launch pad for integration testing with B-15. Once these steps are completed, the mission will be ready for launch, pending FAA approval. This upcoming flight is particularly significant. SpaceX will once again attempt to land Super Heavy using the Megazilla arms, further refining this cutting-edge recovery method. While the ship will land in the ocean rather than on land, its role in the mission is crucial. For the first time, it will deploy a simulated payload, an objective not included in Flight 7. Additionally, SpaceX will test the ship's ability to relight its engines in space a critical milestone for deep space missions. The re-entry and landing process will also be closely monitored to assess improvements to the flaps and heat shield on Ship V2, ensuring the issues encountered in Flight 7 have been resolved. These tests lay the groundwork for future missions, where ships will aim to land at Starbase using Chopstick Pad B, as discussed earlier. Now, let's turn to another rapidly advancing company, Firefly Aerospace. The company recently secured a 21.8 million US dollar contract from the US Space Force to launch orbital missions under the military's Rapid Response Space Program. The contract, announced by the Space Systems Command on February 13th, is for a mission called Victus Sol to be launched aboard Firefly's Alpha rocket. While details regarding the payload, mission objectives, and launch timeline remain undisclosed, this contract is a significant achievement for Firefly. Victus Sol is part of the Tactically Responsive Space, or TACKERS, program, designed to demonstrate the Space Force's ability to rapidly deploy satellites during national security emergencies. This marks Firefly's third contract with the USSF, strengthening its role in government and military space operations. Firefly won the Victus Sol contract through competitive bidding under the Space Force's Orbital Services Program 4, a flexible launch services contract managed by the Space Systems Command's Rocket Systems Launch Program. Firefly CEO Jason Kim emphasized the importance of this mission, stating, This mission will provide the operational capability to have a launch vehicle and space vehicle on standby, while we continue to launch other commercial and government missions until we're called up by the Space Force. The company previously launched the Victus Knox mission in September of 2023 and is preparing for the Victus Hayes mission later this year which will carry a satellite developed by space technology firm True Anomaly. This contract is a major step forward for Firefly, which has gained increased recognition for its Blue Ghost Lunar Lander program. By expanding into military and government launches, the company is positioning itself as a key player in the industry. With growing expertise and a strong track record, Firefly is on a promising trajectory to become a formidable competitor in the commercial space sector.
And for our final leg of today's updates, China is making bold moves in the lunar race. The country has been steadily unveiling new systems for its crewed lunar missions. Last year, it introduced the first version of its lunar spacesuit, and new rover designs have also been revealed. Now, China has officially named these key components, underscoring its long-term vision for lunar exploration. On the 12th of February, the China Manned Space Agency, or CMSA, announced that the lunar spacesuit will be called Wang Yu, meaning ga- gazing into the cosmos. A name that echoes the meaning of Fei Tian, or flying into space, used for China's space station missions. Meanwhile, the rover designated for the lunar missions has been named Tansuo, meaning to explore, reflecting its purpose on the moon. This unpressurized rover will be capable of carrying two astronauts during surface operations. The selection of these names followed a public solicitation for suggestions between September and October of 2024. In addition to the spacesuit and rover, China is considering names for its crewed spacecraft and lunar lander with Mengzhou, or Dream Vessel, and Lan Yue, or Embracing the Moon, being the leading candidates. These names convey China's deep ambition and strategic intent in lunar exploration. More importantly, progress on these systems is advancing rapidly. CMSA confirmed that the Wang Yu lunar suit and the Tansuo rover have now entered the prototype development stage, with all work proceeding smoothly. This development highlights China's serious commitment to its lunar ambitions and signals that the country is making substantial progress in preparing for a crewed moon landing. With China's momentum in lunar exploration gaining speed, the U.S., NASA, and SpaceX must accelerate their efforts to maintain leadership in space. The competition is intensifying, and every step forward by China represents an indirect challenge to the U.S. in the race back to the moon. However, with Artemis progressing and SpaceX pushing the boundaries of rocket reusability, the U.S. still holds a significant advantage. If the current trajectory is maintained, the U.S. remains well-positioned to secure another victory in lunar exploration, reinforcing its dominance and countering the growing ambitions reflected in China's newly named systems. As the race to the moon heats up, the coming years will be critical in determining the next chapter of human space exploration. Let's see what unfolds next. Till then, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay updated with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.